Welcome back. I love the spiritual eye. What is that? You're sitting in meditation and all of a sudden you might have a vision of a round white or golden circle. And inside you might see a bluish or purplish or indigo center. And in the very center of that, you might begin to see a little white star. Okay, that's the vision of the spiritual eye. It can come in lots of different ways. You might see a half moon here or a half moon there or some blue here or some blue there. You might see only the blue or only the white or only the gold or only a tiny little star or only just a deepening darkness in the center. That's the vision of the third eye or the spiritual eye and you can develop it. So I have a video called awakening the spiritual eye. Those are techniques to slowly develop the spiritual eye. And I did this for years and years and years. And it's wonderful. It's a fantastic tool for the yogi. It's a wonderful road sign. Okay, here I am. And you know, on the other side of this, there's absorption and samadhi. And it's also a huge trap for the yogi. And so I want to talk about that because as soon as we see something, the left brain grabs onto it and says, oh, here we go. This is the thing that I need to do. And it, it tightens up your brain and you cannot relax and release. So we're going to talk about all of that today and how to use the spiritual eye wrongly <laughs> and how to use it rightly. So let's get into it. So as soon as the yogi sees the spiritual eye, he says, here it is, it's in front of me. And he focuses like this, <laughs> very, very predatorially, <laughs> using the left brain to focus on the spiritual eye. And a lot of yogis have told me, as soon as I did that, it evaporated, it was gone. The vision ceased because I was no longer in the process that was enabling the vision of the third eye or the spiritual eye. And that process is a, a process of letting go, a process of awakening the parasympathetic, feeling very, very calm, very, very relaxed, and that the body going down into this low idle state reflects back on the mind. And the mind itself begins to relax and let go and unravel. And so your mind is unraveling, your mind is unraveling, the subconscious is unraveling, it's letting go of all of its preoccupations, right? And as that happens, the vision of the spiritual eye suddenly appears. And so the yogi says, oh my God, this is the thing that I was waiting for. And his mind goes into his natural tendency, which is to grasp, right? That grasping nature is our left brain personality. And we were trying to get out of that and to access more of the right brain and the opening up and the letting go and the expansion, right? The Buddhists say the nothingness. It's another way to talk about it. Spaciousness, that's another way to talk about expansion, all right? So it's all the same. Expansion, nothing, non-self. It's all this right brain process of letting go of expanding and and what do you so we talk about surrender that's the same thing so what do you do when you are surrendering oh look at me I, i'm already expanding i'm letting go right i'm expanding it's all expansion you see it's all the right brain it's a right brain process so we're getting that right brain activated deep inside of ourself with the silence and the low idle state. It's activating that right brain. And that's what induces this vision of the spiritual eye. And then we shut it down and we go left brain again. I'm going to grab it. In the prayer at night, Yogananda, one of the most beautiful poems he wrote, he talks about I clasp the empty darkness in hope of seizing thee, finding thee not. I return again and see the taper dimly burning. He's talking about the spiritual eye. I, 
I tried to grasp you and it didn't work. And so I just kept gazing at the spiritual eye. That's a better method, right? If we can just gaze at it and expand, that's the secret because that induces more of the right brain. So if we don't know this, the spiritual eye actually becomes a trap. And the language that is used in a lot of yogic texts, again, is a trap. It's a well-meaning trap. They're not trying to trap you. It's just that the translation and the handing down was not perfect enough that we can easily understand. And so it says, it talks about piercing the spiritual eye. Oh, you have to pierce the spiritual eye. It's right there in one, the Guru Stotram, which is part of my lineage, right? It's part of the heritage I carry. And it says, pierce the spiritual eye. And so the yogi says, okay, great. So finally, I, I, I'm starting to see this. If you think you're seeing the spiritual eye, also called the third eye, by the way, you are. You are seeing it. It's like, I think I had a glimmer. That was it. I think I have a little ghost-like image like this, right? That was it. I think I see like a little bit of blue. That was it. It wasn't quite a circle. That was it. It looked more like an orb, like a, like a jelly kind of orb. That was it. I only saw this deep, dark cave in the center. It was a very small. That was it. All of these are permutations of the spiritual eye. They're, they're, it's light, okay? And so when you look at a light, it's always going to look different. And so, you know, all of my visions of the spiritual eye were, were archetypally the same, and yet they were always different, all right? And it's, it's going to vary between the white or the yellow and the blue or the indigo and then the in the center. And you can see any of those pieces of it, and you're still seeing the spiritual eye, the third eye. You're having that vision. And so you're looking at this thing and you're trying to go into it because they all tell you, you have to go into it, but it's really about going out of it. That's the thing. See, you're going in to go out. And so when you try and go in, you get stuck, right? That's the thing. The left brain traps you because the left brain is the trap and the right brain is the escape. So you can't think of it as if you are going in. You have to think, I am going out, which means you're going through and out, all right? How old the uh, Stephen Covey, begin with the end in mind, right? This is the time. <laughs> begin with the end in mind. So don't think you're going in, think you're going out. And that's how you get out of the trap. Because otherwise, your left brain takes over and I have to pierce it. Well, the instruction to pierce was not concentration, all right? You've already accessed concentration. When you have heart rate variability resonance, when you have the five breast states, when you have the four proofs, you have already accessed, those are all on my channel, by the way. Go through my videos, look for the four proofs. It's so important. The five breast states, that'll just take you deeper into heart rate variability resonance. Look for those videos, they're so important. That will lead you down the deepest path of the low idle state. And that will reflect back on your mind and your mind will start to clear. So it's not that you're forcing your mind. It's that you're clearing your mind, right? We're not going to force the room to be flat. We're going to clean it. We're going to get all the junk out of the way. And then the room is empty and flat. We don't force it to be flat. We just clean it. It's the same with your mind. We go into the low idle state. We do Om Japa into the chakras. Everything in the subconscious cleans out. Everything in the body begins to go down. And we get loads off of the body, which allows the low idle state. And now the room is clear and the brain gets sharp. It gets clear. It gets clean and, and you feel it. Oh my God, I... I feel like I can actually think straight for the first time in my life, maybe, right? I just feel like I'm accessing these glimpses in my mind of clarity. That's it. That's the access. That's that's all the access concentration is. Okay, and now you focus it on expansion. We hope, right? Because if you focus it this way and you try and pierce, and you you're going to bring that control back in the left 
brain process, the predatorial, and we need it. You, you we, look at life. It's, it's a mess, right? Life is crazy. It's messy. It's not clean. We need our lists. I've got to do this and this and this and this. We need that ability inside of ourselves to get things done. And that's the left brain. It's kind of a predator. And when I mean that, I mean that down to the chicken, <laughs> down to the little bird or the chick. He looks at the, at the seed he's going to peck at, and he looks with his right eye, which is cross-connected to the left brain. So he's actually looking with his left brain. I gotta get that thing. And then he pecks at it. And that's predatorial. And we need that in our lives, right? We need that to function. But yet we wanna take a break from it. And that's what allows this right brain access. And so is it the left brain or is it the right? Well, you can't have just one. If you, if you only have one, you're missing out. And it's the dance between the two that we want. We want that infinity circle of the back and forth where the two are functioning in harmony. That's where the magic really is. And that's what we're looking for in meditation. It's like, okay, I did all the doing. Now I want to be the being. I want to expand and be the being. I want to surrender. Where do I go when I surrender? I, I give myself to you. I surrender. I'm expanding automatically. They're the same thing. Isn't that amazing? I just got some amazing feedback on the third training. I, I really love how people are loving it. They're using it. It's working really well for them. It's manifesting. And uh, the, the story that I just got was amazing. All of these insights and, and they were like, okay, is this coming from the conscious mind? Is this coming from the higher self? And then it just opened up and oh my God, this is the higher self giving me a message. The message is reflected into the slower brain waves and now I'm able to access it with the conscious mind. It's magical. Oh my God, I'm so, I'm so enthused and happy that people are using it. It's working correctly and it's taking them into beautiful deep places and this infinity is happening through the processes of that third training. So wonderful, thank you so much for all of the feedback. I really, really love it. it it's, a, <laughs> it's deeply fulfilling to hear your stories. So thank you very, very much. Just remember, when you see the spiritual eye, begin with the end in mind, begin with expansion, right? That's what we want, we wanna expand through it. And this is what Brother Bhimal Ananda was trying to explain to me I was talking to him over and over again about the spiritual eye. And he said, well, you know, I thought of it like an hourglass, right? And so I put in my book this hourglass technique, and it's a little bit hard to understand, a little bit harder to follow than the way I'm presenting it today. But the idea is the same. So it's begin with the end of end in mind. Begin with expansion. And Hakala is designed to give us that same attitude to expand. And that's what helps us to access the right brain. And otherwise, we're going to be trapped. So the spiritual eye is this beautiful boon, right? Or it's a trap and it's up to us. So I hope that you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.